Well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Palmer, and I'm an architect with RTKL in Washington, D.C. Um, and I'm here today to talk about a place to go. Um, so quite simply, a place to go is a small project to build a toilet and make a big impact. Um, more specifically, it's actually a project to replace this toilet, um, a single pit latrine that over 150 kids, both boys and girls, share with this toilet, a biogas toilet that will turn waste into energy, it will serve as a model for community development, and it, most importantly, it will provide a safe and proud place to go for those kids. Um, so a place to go actually has its, um, its roots in another project that started back in 2009. Uh, when I traveled with the team to Machakos, Kenya with Architecture for Humanity DC uh, to participate in a community design workshop with an organization called Jitegame. Um, over the past six years, um, the Architecture for Humanity team has helped turn their um, initial ideas for a new campus into um, one that's being built today. Um, so the, the name Jitegame literally translates into sustain yourself in Swahili. Um, and the organization really kind of lives out this missive um, by working with disadvantaged youths in the local community um, and empowering them through a number of outreach programs. So this is kind of, um, this is how we got involved in a little background of what Jitegame does. So where does the toilet come in? Um, one of the other things that Jitegame offers is a meal program, and every day they feed 150 kids lunch. For some of those kids, it's the only meal that they get every day. So in 2013, our team from RTKL really saw the toilet, believe it or not, as an opportunity to add value to the meal program by creating a resource loop. The idea was pretty simple, that we would take the waste from one process and then use that to power another process. Um, and this is how that works. So the waste is collected in a chamber underground. Uh, within that chamber, microbes then um, uh, digest that waste, and the byproduct of that uh, process is biogas. The biogas is then piped into the kitchen where it replaces dirty, expensive uh, charcoal, and then they use that to cook food. Um, that food is used in the meal program, the kids eat the food, kids poop their heart's content, and then the process starts all over again. So um, we didn't want to just plop this technology down um, onto the campus. Uh, we really wanted to make sure we engaged the community as well. So uh, we went there, we talked to the kids in the community, we taught them about biogas, what the potential was, and we took them to see a working model of it. Um, so everybody really had a good idea of exactly what this thing was, and so they felt comfortable with the technology to then implement it. Um, the team from RTKL also wanted to work as developers. We knew that this project needed to be funded, so we wanted to work as developers instead of just designers. So we, uh, we have a big firm and we have a bunch of different skill sets and expertises, and we use all of those different um, all of those different skill sets to really drive our campaign and through the design process, through um, fundraising campaigns, through a pretty killer social media game, um, we raised about $15,000 in six months. Um, very happy to say that um, the project is under construction right now. Um, on the left, you can see the toilet and the kitchen block next to each other. Um, and on the right, you can see the new gas stoves um, that will be used um, with the biogas to um, make more food. Um, so with any luck, um, in about six months, uh, we'll begin uh, producing gas and turning poop into power. Thank you. Thank you, Gert. Thoughts? Um, I'm very excited for a safe and proud place to poop. Um, I want to know how much it costs and if it's scalable. Sure. So um, the, the initial target for fundraising was $15,000, and we set that because we wanted to be able to make sure that we had the ability to travel there, um, connect with the community, and work with them. Um, the unit, in the end, cost about $6,000, all told. That's to build the, um, the toilet block and then the um, biogas digester at the same time. Um, it's a great technology. It will scale up and down. I've seen models that, um, that use a 50-gallon drum, and then they have agricultural models that use um, digester tanks probably the size of a football field. So the technology itself scales really well. 
Graham. Do, do you guys uh, have any plans, you know, based on the impending success to try to roll this out at other communities? Or do you think this is just a, a one-off with the one community? No, I, I think we do. I think the first thing we want to do actually is one of the things, um, if you saw there, was they have a vocational training program at their school where they train um, kids in, um, you know, automobile um, mechanics. Um, carpentry, things like that. So the first thing we want to do is if we have the opportunity, we want to get the technology of biogas um, to be a part of that vocational training program. So that way we really kind of pump up the, um, the resiliency of it and we help them um, spread the technology into the community and also create a new um, economic model that um, they could then uh, spread as well. Um, but after that, yes, I would, I would love to see this working in other communities. Um, I wanted to ask the, the opposite of the scaling question. Is this scalable down from the uh, diagram you showed? It looks like there's a lot of infrastructure required. Is there like a minimum version of this? Um, so I would say the minimum version is probably uh, a home use model, which would use something like a 50 gallon um, tank. This one itself used a 25 cubic meter tank. So that's about um, the size of a pickup truck, you know, up and down. Um, so it does scale down. I could see this being built into a portable model. Maybe it's, you know, placed at concerts or it's at a dog park so you can just throw your dog waste in there um, along with it. But it does scale down to a, a more portable size. I have a, a four-year-old boy, so he'd love this. <laughs> Talking about poop in a room this large would be his, his thing. I, my question is about the energy balance. How much uh, how much are you offsetting? Is, 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 is it enough methane to power everything they need in terms of, in terms of fuel, or is there a supplement that's necessary? So um, the, the, the program is actually, they're in the process of obtaining three milk cows um, so that they can balance out the system. Um, one of the things with the um, sort of the transitory nature of the, the kids coming and going, you don't know the steady stream. So we had to look at that, and that's actually why we used a 25 cubic meter tank. Um, one of the groups we work with wanted us to build a 500 cubic meter tank. And we kind of went through the calculations, and they're really only using it right now for the cooking gas, and they serve one meal a day. And so that's about double the capacity they would need. Um, but the longer you, um, the bigger the tank, the longer it takes to fill up. Um, and then if you drain it, the longer it takes to restart. So we wanted to use something kind of in the middle um, to make sure that we were working with that. And one more super quick question. Uh, I just wanted to ask if you had come, overcome any stigmas with uh, using this new system. Uh, yes, I wish you would ask that earlier because I have a really great story about that. Uh, we can talk later, but one of the reasons we use humor in the campaign was because it's very difficult to talk about this kind of thing. And, and so, thank you. My son. Yes. And now, see, that's a great thing because now people can come up and say, tell me the story that we didn't get to hear. So you'll be telling it's that story a lot. It's a good so, one. So thank you. Thank you, guys.